We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm here with First Updates Now. I'm here with the Grand Valley State University team. We're here at Fair State University at the Michigan RA3D competition. Uh, it's been an awesome time, and we've got a lot of great teams here. So I'm here with Grant and Amanda, and they're going to talk to you about the robot. This is the FanGV team from, uh, from uh, Grand Valley State University. All right, well, thanks so much. Um, so a quick... Uh, a uh, breakdown of what's the most kind of obvious and out front thing about the robot is this giant box of a ramp on top. Um, with our design, we wanted to make sure that the robot was not only simple enough for us to get done in the three days, but that it was uh, simple enough in terms at least to where any rookie team could watch our, our stream live and build this exact same thing or whatever variation they wanted of this. And so, so to keep it as simple as possible, we do low goal scoring only. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no uh, intake off the floor. It's just intake uh, from the wall. So we get three balls in, in the top of the time. And then we just spit it out directly through the ramp on the low goal. And we have uh, one piston here, uh, which I can't actuate because it's under pressure. But this ramp will flip down. Oh, what? Yeah. And we have these wheels that then spit out the ball. And then the ramp flips back up. You want to? Yeah. So we have this, you have these pools here. We have our high-tech tensioner, oh yeah. And then ramp just comes right back up like that. And this makes it really simple and easy for us to just take in balls from the back. Yeah, here. So this makes it super easy for us to just take in balls from the back and then for the ramp to flip down and then for us to just, it slipped off the chain, but you got the idea. It, it comes out the front and then ramp goes back up. We go back and keep cycling balls. Um, so it's very simple, very straightforward, and anyone can really do it. And I'll pass it off to Amanda to talk about our color wheel. Yes, so we have this motor here to control this wheel, which will help um, spin the color wheel. Um, so we have a little bit of a camera system so we can see what's going on in front of the robot to help us see what color the wheel is on so we can spin it to the correct color or see how many rotations that the robot um, has done, how many more that we need to do. And that's right on the front there so it's very accessible. Awesome. Great job. So with this robot, what are the sort of challenges you're running into on the field? We saw the issue where the ball is you know, sort of having maybe an issue coming out and hitting the wheel. What other challenges have you had out here and that teams can learn from that you want to tell them about? Yeah, um, so we originally had a hook system. Our hook is currently on the bottom of the robot. Um, and we were originally going to have the hook attached up here, come through the middle, up to here, and like shoot this um, up to hang, which I think, there we go. Yeah, um, so the hook would come up like that, except we have had a problem where our hook will not stay on this, so the hook will shoot up off yeah. into the air, which is um, not very good. It's a little bit dangerous, and there's no aiming capability. <laughs> so we've had to um, take the hook down and attach it to the bottom of the robot. Um, Just to keep it out of the way. Yeah, to keep it out of the way. All right, so if you were to upgrade this robot and add something additional to it to make it so that it was an even better robot, you had more than three days to build it, what would you, what would you do? Uh, okay, first thing I would definitely do is um, I, would, I would ditch the single roller here and like OSU has where they have these, they have these uh, surgical uh, tubing lines that run all the way from the back of their intake all the way to the front. I would add that because then it gives you full control of the ball the entire time and then it's much more reliable once it gets up to the front because this bar is not actually perfectly uh, level with the ramp. One side's a little higher than the other and it'd be much easier if it was all just tubing so it could nice so it could stretch and be very uh, uh, compliant towards the balls. Um, and then something you would change. I, I would definitely try to fix the hook mechanism. I think it's really promising. We just need a better, um, more reliable attachment method. And if we had more time, I definitely think something, that we could work that yeah, out. Yeah. Something, something preferably that actually threads onto the end of the piston, but we just didn't have any hardware to fit the piston. All right, well, great job. And again, this is Grand Valley State University here at the Ferris State RI3D competition. 
Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. 